Brachial plexus is one of the most essential yet volatile subjects to remember both as medical students and anesthetists. But if we try to systematically relate it in 3D fashion with anatomy and radio images, the memory stays forever. Let's do that. The brachial plexus has five zones. Mnemonic to remember is Ryan Taylor drinks cold beer. So, R for roots, T for trunks, D for divisions, C for chords and finally B for branches. The roots participating in forming brachial plexus are 5 in number and extending from C5 to T1. C5 and C6 combine to form upper trunk. The middle root C7 remains independent and the low C8 and T1 combine to form lower trunk. Seeing it from sideways on neck, the nerve roots coming out of respective vertebra and joining as shown in the lower diagram. Now remember there are 7 cervical vertebra, but the nerve roots coming out are total 8. If you see in this diagram, each respective nerve root emerges from above the concerned cervical vertebra until the 7th cervical vertebra. The nerve root coming from above it is C7 and the one emerging from below it is C8. Beyond this point, every nerve root emerges from below the respective vertebra, like T1 emerging from below the first thoracic vertebra. This completes the zone 1 of brachial plexus, the roots. Next up is the green colored trunks. So, five roots combine to form three trunks, upper, middle and lower trunks. As said before, C7 root goes forward without combining to form the middle trunk. Now, this is important. These trunks are not only moving downwards and laterally as seen here, but if we look at them from the sides, they are also moving anteriorly towards the clavicle, right? So this forms zone 2 of brachial plexus, the trunks. Before we move any further, I will draw a very important structure now, the subclavian artery, because the brachial plexus beyond trunks is fully twisted around this one vessel. So the artery moves behind the clavicle and laterally curves downwards towards the axilla to form axillary artery. Now where to put the ultrasound probe to see the trunks? Well, to find out, you must know the muscles well. The first is this giant sternocleidomastoid muscle, so apparent a landmark in any neck procedure, extending from mastoid above to clavicular and sternal heads below. Below and lateral to sternocleidomastoid lies the anterior scalene muscle and middle scalene muscle. Now the trunks emerge through these two scalene muscles at interscalene groove at C6 level. We will discuss landmarks in detail in specific block lectures. But point being, this is where you place the transducer to see the trunks. In right lower diagram, you can see the grey ultrasound rays dissecting through the trunks at interscalene groove and C6 or cricoid cartilage level. Now in the ultrasound image, we can see the fine traffic light signal. Roots C5 and C6 almost about to join to form upper trunk and C7 root forming the middle trunk. The lower C8 and T1 are usually spared in interscalene block, so ulnar nerve area is spared. Notice how the roots or trunks, they are sandwiched between the bellies of anterior scalene and middle scalene muscles. So 5 roots, 3 trunks so far. Next up, divisions. Now each trunk from zone 2 divides into anterior and posterior divisions. The posterior divisions of all three trunks combine naturally posteriorly to form the posterior cord. The anterior division of upper and middle trunk combine to form further the lateral cord. Whereas the anterior division of lower trunk goes without combining and forms the medial cord. So you see a cross shaped above and an oblique shape below in division area all moving laterally and slightly above to subclavian artery as seen here. If we remove the clavicle to see more clearly how these divisions lie lateral and above subclavian artery. So let's place ultrasound in supraclavicular area now and see how it looks in ultrasound screen. In lower diagram again you can see how ultrasound waves dissect through the divisions at this level. Now on ultrasound screen I see the pleural lining and rib shadows the subclavian artery, these grape-like structures are the anterior and posterior divisions of upper, middle and lower trunks.
you can see how they are lateral to the subclavian artery and somewhat upper side. Again, a static image with subclavian artery, the grape-like divisions lateral to it, and you can also see a needle coming in from lateral side that is targeting the anterior and posterior divisions of the lower trunk. So this completes zone 3 of brachial plexus, the divisions. So we've already discussed how cords are formed, but these cords are called lateral, medial and posterior to what structure? You guessed right, the subclavian artery. As can be seen, lateral cord going lateral to the artery, posterior cord posteriorly and medial cord running medial to the artery, right? Now, there are two windows to exploit via ultrasound to target the cords. Firstly, and relatively newer technique is the costoclavicular blocks. Just at the point of divisions forming cords, before the cords have moved in their respective directions to the artery, they are still clustered together behind the artery below the clavicle near costochondral joint. So, placing the probe here shows us this image. You can clearly see the lateral, medial and posterior cords together behind the artery. The second window to see the cords is in infraclavicular blocks where the cords are running around the artery in their respective relations. Placing the transducer here helps ultrasound dissect planes and cords as shown in the diagram here. So on screen you can see the three cords lying in their respective relations to axillary artery. The final zone of brachial plexus is the branches coming out of cords. The lateral cord gives away musculoskeletal branch that runs away laterally from the branches around axillary artery. The medial cord continues as ulnar nerve and ulnar nerve stays in proximity to axillary artery. The posterior cord gives away radial nerve and axillary nerve. The axillary like musculocutaneous moves away from the artery but the radial nerve lies behind the artery. Before continuing as musculocutaneous and ulnar nerves, the lateral and medial cords combine their extensions to form median nerve that runs in proximity to axillary artery. Let's place transducer now in axillary region at level of axillary artery. As the probe dissects this region through the artery and nerves as shown, the image appearing in screen shows axillary artery and surrounding nerves of ulnar, median and radial. Also you can see in this image the musculocutaneous nerve in a distance between the coracobrachialis and bicep brachii muscle. So overall we have 5 roots, then 3 trunks placed vertically, upper, middle and lower and each trunk having 2 divisions, the anterior and posterior divisions and then there are 3 cords lying in relation to axillary artery and then in the end we have branches. So this is all about brachial plexus and its 5 zones. I'm pretty sure if you have seen the video with focus, it won't be hard memorizing brachial plexus again. Next up, in regional anesthesia, we move towards understanding specific brachial plexus blocks separately. But before that, the dermatomes up next. So stay tuned.